In my life, I have a right to choose my life path. I've had many different courses in my career path. I literally came out of college with a journalism degree and I moved on from there into several things. I eventually went abroad and did my trade of not marketing, but training people of all different ages and stations in a different world away from here. I mastered the language in about a year. And while I may not be a master of every aspect and every word of that entire language, I'm pretty good according to the people who are natives there. Meaning, I know the nuances because of my reading, I know the abilities because of what I studied on my own time, and my library is probably one of the largest that ever exists in terms of <clears throat> the state that I lived in. And probably this state too. But there's always a liar who thinks they have the right to violate a person's property bags violate a person's home, violate a person's storage unit, and steal and pilfer as if it's their own. The lie they've told themselves is that they didn't think that God above was watching them. You see, there is a commandment in across every literally good book of every land that says, thou shall not steal. Because the Lord above, in a pagan world like Odin, provides us what we need. These are the marvelous things about the Viking videos and the Gaelic things we watch in history channels and love to see. Yes, there's a lot of war going on. Yes, there's a lot of sex going on. Yes, that is the way of life. After all, it is one of the hierarchy of needs that every human being needs in their life. But most people have the right to choose their Lord. Most people have the right to choose their partners. And most people have the right to say no when they mean no. But there is a mob and a crowd brewing. There is a hatred in the land stewing. And there are upcoming documentaries talking about hate. So while we might get hit for white supremacy just because we've shaved our head and decided to not worry about the sprouts up there, we also have another side to that coin. That the blacks might just hate us as much as they allege we hate them. It's not true, because anyone knows that Jesus Christ was actually pretty dark-skinned. If you had any study of archaeology, if you had any interest in the History Channel, and if you had any concept of National Geographic, you know that is true. He might have actually been Muslim, but who knows? But what we know is that man that most people make fun of, even the pagans may not like a lot, they do regard him as a prophet, is my understanding, but the truth is what he did was teach and preach peace across the land. You see, they can say you can't hate your brother and your mother and all that if you're a man of the Lord. But when a person is violated, when a person's rights are taken, when a person is lied to, when a person is stolen from, it's a little hard to profess that you love the Lord. And if you're the person doing that perpetration, if you're the person violating all the rules in the house of the Lord, of attacking someone's life, assaulting their life, and doing weird things to their life, there's no way in hell you're part of the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord of Odin is open to everyone. A pagan priest like me has the right to choose his life, to choose his wife, to extend that invitation and wait patiently, sometimes a long time, for the response from the one he loves. And the one I love knows damn well who she is. The second I love also knows who she is because in both cases I wrote a book in honor of them. One is about pendulum an old way of dousing, an old way of connecting with the Holy Ghost, an old way of finding landlines, land faults, and literally oil, I believe, and water in the world. The other one got a book on soul keeping, and her name is in that book. And any motherfucker in this community that's not those who are pretending to be those people, I will sue you into the motherfucking earth. I guarantee that fat ass woman on this street is not my interest. And I might find Kuala Harris the most beautiful black woman I've ever seen in my life, but I'm not about to put myself out there for that. You see, I have a chosen wife, according to the house of the Lord. And the Lord chose that one for me. The Lord also provided me a soulmate to help to mold me into a different person, and she was the inspiration to one of my books. I have actually written quite a lot of content in my lifetime. I do actually know how to market people. But the problem is that you look at me and think I can't market be it. No, that's not the problem. The problem is I've got men who are usually white men, older than me, possibly the same age as me, who monkey ass think they've got rights to my life, and they don't. Because I don't know them, I don't want them in my life, and they have no rights to be anywhere near me or anyone I love, you see. And the liars in my family already destroyed our family. My father's legacy was love, honor, and guard. 
and my siblings destroyed them. So as I produce my new life, I'm producing new brothers like my Irish friend, and I'm producing new sisters like some of the ladies who tried to love on me and got a lesson instead. When a man is living in the streets, we don't have the ability to safeguard our food. I've had food come and go from my bags that I got from a loving, quote-unquote, ministry. But I've also had food monkeyed with by the Muslims and the Arabs and the Chinese that play in those ministries. And every time I go to one ministry, my food is screwed up every time. The pastor does it nice and slow so he can have his little people show up and follow me. And he's so dumb that he doesn't realize what he's doing. He's violating federal law. He doesn't have the right to insult me and say I don't have a family. I do have a family. I actually have a large family. But it's my chosen family, not my birth family. And if they choose to come in and eat that food, I will test that food with my life before I ever give it to a loving wife. And I will not eat it if the Lord says don't eat it. So don't walk up to a man like me and try to feed me like I'm a cat or dog. Don't walk into any establishment and presume to be me as if you know what I need at that moment in time in my cellular health. If you want to do something loving and kind for my pagan ministry or my life, you see, what you'll do is either ply me with a handful of cash and walk away, or you'll provide me some cash on a regular basis and say, I want to talk to you. I want to borrow your consulting mind. I want to have an actual reading from the Lord. Or what you'll do is you'll go into a shop like the Circle K, where there's usually good staff on duty when I go there, and you'll buy me a gift card like a loving lady did one time who walked up and said, could I buy you something? And I said, no, I'm okay, but if you'd like to contribute to my ministry, please buy a gift card. And because of her loving $10 gift card, we were able to feed someone for about three meals. And the other day, a loving little Asian girl, who was probably from the American States, and I could tell because there's a slight difference in skin color, walked up and lovingly gave me $10. And again, we were able to feed someone for about two and a half meals off that gift. Because anyone in poverty knows how to be frugal in this world. 